Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I'm Lucas and welcome back to another league racing video here for PSGL F1. Uh, here for round four at the Netherlands uh, at Zanvo. A really fun track to drive and uh, yeah, let's just jump straight into it. Truth be told, this is my second take at this uh, voiceover as I had the wrong input device. So yes, I'm definitely a professional. But anyway, <laughs> out of the way, we have rain forecast for 30 to 45 minutes in the race, but it's about 50% chance, so it's, um, it's a bit if button maybe at the moment with the forecast. But anyway, um, a bit similar to like Belgium last week. We don't really have an idea what the weather's going to do, but anyway. Without further ado, we're into the first run of qualifying for um, this PS. Well, well, for Q1, um, of course, having full qualifying in PSGL, and um, yeah, it's um, yeah, that's really it. Um, heading now down to the middle sector. My brain is a little bit um, muddled up at the moment. Anyway, I have done this voiceover already, so it is a little bit. Um, I don't know all over the place but um, you know pushing on in this first lap though we really wanted to do only one run in Q1 if possible as we usually do um, purely because um, we don't know what the weather's gonna do as well in the race so we want to have options uh, for the next stages of qualifying bit of oversteer in the transition phase there as well and uh, that chicane uh, but heading on to the final sector now uh, Red Bull starting our lap in uh, front of us, but we don't uh, get slip seems banned anyway in this, but we don't get any toll from this distance no matter what. But anyway, heading to the line now, and it is a 1.08.4. The lap didn't feel good when driving it, but in reflection, it was actually quite a good lap for Q1. And that put us top for Q1. Um, so safely through, first run, no problem. And uh, yeah, the grid was so close in Q1, like. People unbelievably close as you can see from the gaps there um, so you know it's, it's just crazy but anyway uh, for Q2 we wanted to try and go in the mediums if possible to go into Q3 obviously on raw pace this wouldn't be possible because obviously the mediums are um, well yeah the mediums are you get, I've got less grip but um, it depends on how many people uh, uh, you know, it was go on okay. it. And I mean, the lap was alright. Yarlow did a point six, so that was a good lap from him. Uh, um, and yeah, it's uh, now a bit of a tricky situation because we are P6, um, but I don't believe the mediums would go through on this lap. So we had to set like a safe lap anyway here uh, to I'll, I'll enable ourselves to yeah, have the the comfort of knowing. Well, I mean, there you go. Within a space of a few corners, we're down to P9. Um, so, yeah, um, not looking very safe at the moment. We knew we'd get through easily um, in this session anyway. It was just about not making uh, any mistakes, any invalidations, and, you know, bringing in a very safe lap. You know, there's no need to overpush it. I mean, we'll easily get through, so just got to, you know, bring it home, drive it nice and smooth, and that'll do. So <laughs> um... So yeah, uh, good few tenths up on our medium lap at the moment, as you'd expect. And purple in the middle, getting that transition a bit smoother than we did in Q1. Car pulled to the right, I'll borrow, not on a lap. And yeah, just oh, rounded out the lap, nearly invalidating there, we actually understood quite a bit. And uh, yeah, down to P10, so we absolutely have to improve this lap if we want to go into Q3. Um, Otherwise, we would need to start outside the top 10 on mediums, and that's a big risk, you know, that's like a gamble, because um, we can't, um, we can't predict the weather, you know, it's not, it's not usually predictable very well on the F1 game, it's tricky. Um, so yeah, uh, heading on now to the, I believe it's the first new tyre run on Q3 now, so, um, you know, we're going for pole position, we're going for it now, and yeah, let, yeah let's just see how it goes, so, Heading into turn two, then three. Uh, we've got the cambered corner here. Getting it nicely tucked up. And uh, there we go. But I've almost seen on exit, but it's all right. A few, I don't know how much we're up in the delta because I can't really see it, but um, purple on sector one. Because that's really important. Purple. Um, nice and smooth through there. Uh, fourth gear, then we've got a short shift to fifth. Um, tenth and a bit up, I believe. Uh, I 
bit early to that apex, so a little bit hesitant, not able to get on the power very early, so there's definitely a bit more time on the table in that corner. Um, and now heading towards the end of uh, the lap, getting that transition quite nice. Upshift, getting it nice and smooth. Final corner, very hard to get right. Car understeering, the yellow flag's ahead of us, but we just completely ignore it. Uh, I believe Yardo spun or something. Um, according to my Twitter chat, I can't remember, but uh, anyway, that puts us provisional pole for now. It was an okay banker lap, but we definitely need more because, I mean, I was expecting to, you know, pole position to be in the point ones, and that was the sort of lap time I wanted to at least be in because, uh, you know, you can definitely do that. So, uh, yeah, here it is, the final run of Q3, the lap that we need to deliver. So, breaking as close as we can to 50 metres, getting a nice tight line, using fourth gear, we've got lots of grip so we can rev out that gear, all the way up to sixth, down to fifth, getting a nice tight line, third gear, nice and tight, upshift to fourth, bit of, nah, really good grip on the exit, and we're up a little bit by a few hundreds on our lap, so that's a good start. Um, now, heading towards, uh, well, Papo in sector one, so that's good, heading now down towards uh, the middle sector, nice and clean through there though, a little bit of a later apex in the lap before, but carried a lot of speed, two cars on the inside, didn't really put us off too much, because we've got so much grip at this point, so the confidence just keeps going up and up and up, fourth gear this time, not going too shallow to that apex, and getting a much better exit, <clears throat> and there you go, uh, the delta is up, so we're looking really good at this lap so, so far, uh, down to third gear, just touching that, but then we get freaking oversteer on the kerb, which has cost us time, you know, it, uh, it's so annoying with these things, with the kerbs and stuff, but we got a bit of understeer through the last corner as well, and yeah, the lap that went from looking really good, went from, well, fell into something that was only a tiny improvement, and that really, really sucked, because, um, yeah, definitely felt like it should have been more, um, but as we wait now for other cars to cross the line, and um, we are waiting on who we waited on, uh, and there we go, Ruben, um, taking pole position by three yeah. thousandths of a second. Job, so, so, yeah, we are really annoyed. Um, you know, it's so frustrating when you the lose it like that. Um, yeah, we just got on the curb and the car just completely broke away on the rear and then we yep. lost we lost time. I mean, my final sector on the lap when I looked at the sectors was like a 0.85, which is, I mean, half a tenth away from where, you know, you kind of want to be, but, you know, even it was 300 slower than the run before. So, do you know, that curb definitely hurt us. But the positive is that we're still P2. Um, we've still got opportunities in this race, and for all we know, we could be in for the fight for the win. So, let's see how we get on. We're lining up in the grid, waiting for the cars to line up. You know, all eyes are forward in this race. And, yeah, uh, let's see how it gets going. We really just want to focus on getting a good start and uh, managing our way forward from here so the five red lights come up on your screen now and we wait for them to go out and they do get a nice up shift and bang we got an amazing start up the inside breaking late around 50 meters a little bit of contact but you know it was nothing you know malicious or bad it was okay it was just really close racing um, and that's us into the lead so you know perfect start we might not have got pole position but we took the position um, straight from the beginning and that is us off I'm just leaving there to say apologies for the contact I didn't really need to do that I mean it wasn't, wasn't any harm story. and reflection but it's always hard to look at when you're in the moment and yeah on board for the entirety of lap one as always um, and yeah uh, just uh, we, well, we actually already have a car really far behind so as well so something must have really happened on the minimap as you can see on the left something must have happened so I don't really know what ha you know what went on but um, yeah um, heading now towards the final sector Ruben four turns behind so yeah um, the order myself Ruben Fabrizio Yoni and Patrick Yoni on those mediums of course so he's looking to go a bit longer in this race I believe and uh, yeah um, the aim now is just to focus on the tyres and just try and, you know, manage it because the if the rain came at all in this race, um, it would come way past the point of soft tyres. And as you can see now, we're on lap 10 because absolutely nothing happened. Nothing. Zero. So, um, yeah, here we are. Order's still the exact same. We're just chilling, uh, trying to manage the race. Going through this right-hander. Uh, and then on the kerb a little bit, and then we get a huge snap of oversteer. Um, I can confirm it was the wrong brake bias. It wasn't, you know, um, 
being too aggressive or greedy, we just had the wrong break by us on, which was a very, very close call. Could have been a lot worse. A lot, 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 lot worse. We might have been out of the race, we could have been in the gravel, but we managed to save it and keep P2. So, in some way, it changed nothing. So I'll get really lucky there, I'll, I'll count my blessings. Um, you know, we got away with it. Uh, <laughs> I quite, I think it big by us, it was like 53 in that corner. Um, which is way, way, way too far back. Um, so yeah, I don't know how I had it in 53. It was way too far back. Um, it was, I don't know what, I'd, maybe I'd clicked the wrong amount of times on one of the buttons or something, I don't know. But anyway, uh, coming to the end of lap 11, Ruben diving into the pits. So now is our time to get the hammer down using that ERS blasting on with it, because now we need to get ready to box. Um, we're going to be pitting on this lap, lap 12, because, you know, we're never going to be able to stretch to the rain, which, uh, according to Jeff, was 15 minutes away from this lap. 15 minutes at Zanvo, I mean, I mean, let's see, 1 minute 11, so, you know, nearly 1 minute lap, so we mean 12, 15 laps, you know, anything in that region with 15 minutes, because ah, 15 well, minutes is the, the, the highest it can say, it could be even further away. So, Completely the rain should not be coming lot, so, uh, until the mid 20s happens, um, in terms of lap which means that you know the other medium runners will start to suffer and it might not intensify so you know we just focused on you know what we could control with our strategy and try to you know maximize it but anyway Ruben obviously rejoining with the undercut ahead of us but uh, we did a really good job in that out lap we didn't lose a position to Nicholas Mateo and here we are at the end of lap 13 uh, the lap that we rejoined on these mediums and we are right onto the back of Ruben we want to take the theoretical lead of this race back so DRS open, ERS deployed and moving to the inside Ruben doesn't put up a much of a fight and that is us back into the theoretical lead very important for our race to crack on with it Fabrizio Donoso coming out the pit lane now he pitted in lap 13 one lap longer than us and now let the race commence. We are pushing on now to catch uh, the medium runners who have not stopped. So we have Cedric Tomey ahead of us and Dario Lamillo as well. So skipping on a few laps, lap 16, we closed that gap. That was a few seconds now onto the back of Cedric using a little bit of ERS, going up his inside, fastest lap of the race. What we like to see, heavy breaking into Tom one, a little bit deep, but secures the move, uh, the move, the <laughs> move, and that'll be us done. Dario Lamillo ahead of us now as well. Uh, lap 17, the lap later. Um, heading on to the main street again. Um, doesn't have DRS, so it should be an easy pass. A little bit of ERS uses just to secure the move, and that should be it. And according to Jeff, now the vein is imminent in the next few minutes. So, Jeff, mate, I don't know if you can count time, but that was not 15 minutes, and lo and behold, lap 22, it's raining. And it's still dry, but yeah, the weather forecast was, uh, yeah, great. Thanks, Jeff. But anyway. Um, you know, we're still pushing on, there's still opportunities in this race from us in this moment, uh, but Simon Vigang's now retired, um, and as I say about opportunities, this is the, one of the worst things that could have happened to us. This has absolutely, well, it's, ru it's basically ruined our race. And we really don't, we don't want to pit because Lewis Welch, our teammate, has pitted, and we were P9. So if we pit now, we're out the points. Um, and the rain, the you know, at the so moment wasn't wet enough for Inters. Um, and then Jeff said it was going to go away in like five minutes. Um, under the safety car, it was like five minutes. And I can confirm the rain didn't go away until the end of the race in lap 36. So, yeah, everything just went completely as wrong as it could have under the safety car. We stayed out, you know, because, I mean, we were not going to be in the points. So, you know, my best chance of winning this race, because I only really wanted to win, um, was to, you know, it was to take that risk, obviously. Um, as oh we get God, a small so tap from Ruben behind because we were doing a burnout and, out, and then we tried to start weaving. And the game gave us a penalty oh, fucking for a literal tap. What happened? Bro? For, you know, under the safety car. Like, really? Honestly. But anyway, here's me happened, weaving, bro. trying to keep temperature because it's really hard to keep temperature in these conditions. And all of a sudden, we're trying to go, we're blasting it, and then accordingly, we've got another penalty. What's it got? Freaking another penalty! The game was really on top form today for, you know, BS, because, I mean, two penalties within the space of nothing for, you know, literally nothing, like taps. So, yeah, a bit of a disgrace, but at the end of the day, in some way, it didn't matter because the rain just got worse, and, uh, yeah, we were screwed. <laughs> uh, we were P9. 
Uh, and then, no wait, no, that's not P9. P5, P6, P7, P8, dropping down the order, just trying to keep away from everyone. Um, yeah, everything that went, could have went wrong in this race, you know, almost did. In regards to strategy, not much we can really... Two penalties for nothing, I don't even... Uh, not really much we can do, so I mean, from leading the race and from being the theoretical leader to now being out of the points, you know, that's just the way it goes. I mean... I mean, it doesn't matter. The only sort of um, comfort we can take is that, we, you know, we performed well, really well, we did another, you know, a strong good. drive, and, you know, we just got to keep this up. Um, if it, you know, if we keep putting ourselves in this position, eventually it has to go right, surely. Um, so I'm yeah, you know, I'm keeping the positives, keeping the positives, so, you know, on these intermediates for the remainder of the lap, I really wanted to push on, I didn't want to give up, there was still a safety car that could have happened, for example, so I was, I refused to sort of give up, we have uh, Danny Moreno in front of us, 3.4 seconds, so he's like the target for the rest of the race, and to lap 36, we managed to catch Danny Moreno down to 1.2 seconds, so, you know, we really pushed on well. I was really happy with the intermediate pace. I think we were, real, well, right up there with, I mean, I'm not sure if we were the fastest car or not. I, I wasn't able to check lap times, but I certainly felt there. Um, but yeah, you know, it's sure always nice to push to show what sort of could have been, you know, just to, you know, to push on. You never want to give up. So, um, you know, even in the, the toughest of circumstances, you've got to keep the, a positive mentality in as much as you can. Um, you know, it could have been a safety car and we could have been thrown back into it, but ultimately the safety car that came out really put an end to our race. But GG to on to the Ronnie next one, positive, well, you know, positive stuff um, overall with the, the speed. So yeah. anyway, I don't know what more. Uh, Yori Tomla wins. Yeah, Lewis Welch P2 and Sebastian Job. A uh, Job, sorry, MP3. Uh, but guys, thank you so much for tuning I mean, in. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope to see you in a future video. Take care, everyone. Have yeah, a great I mean, rest I of your day. Goodbye.